Okay, in our video series of cardiology lectures, in this video, we are going to talk about dilated cardiomyopathy. We are going to talk about its clinical presentation, its causes, diagnosis, and management of dilated cardiomyopathy in detail. First of all, we have a case here. A 40 year old man comes to your clinic. The patient has a history of long standing excess intake of alcohol, and this patient now comes to you with shortness of breath. The patient tells you, The doctor, I get short of breath when I walk. I get short of breath when I walk across a single block. When I'm sleeping at night, I get severe shortness of breath. Then I have to sit up or I go to the window. I stand there for some time and then I get better. Doctor, I also experience leg swelling. I also experience abdominal swelling. This patient is having signs and symptoms of overt heart failure. When you perform echocardiography in this patient, what you see is that the patient is having a dilated heart. This patient is suffering from dilated cardiomyopathy. What is dilated cardiomyopathy? How do you manage it? Today, we are going to talk about that. This is a picture showing a normal heart with a normal left ventricle with thick walls. This is the normal left ventricular wall. Now, in this picture, you can see the left ventricle has been dilated. The left ventricle is ballooned up. This is a picture showing the heart with dilated cardiomyopathy. And when the heart is dilated in dilated cardiomyopathy, this heart cannot contract properly. This heart cannot pump the blood to the body. This heart cannot pump the blood to the aorta. Therefore, the patient goes into heart failure and develops the signs and symptoms of heart failure where the dilated heart cannot pump the blood to the body. Dilated cardiomyopathy is the enlargement of left or both ventricles accompanied by structural or functional impairment of the systolic function. The pumping function is impaired. But a very important point to remember is that it occurs in the absence of any coronary artery disease. The patient will not have any history of coronary artery disease or congenital heart disease or abnormal feeling pressures like valvular heart disease or hypertension because this is a cardiomyopathy. In cardiomyopathies, mostly the cause is idiopathic. We do not know the cause. Patient do not have a cardiac history and patient comes to you with a dilated cardiomyopathy where the heart gets dilated. Because if coronary artery disease is there, if the patient is having hypertension or if the patient is having valvular disease, then it makes sense that the patient has a certain problem and due to that problem, there is dilated cardiomyopathy. But dilated cardiomyopathy, which is primary, in that primary dilated cardiomyopathy, we do not know the cause and most commonly, it's genetic. It's the genes that are causing the heart to get dilated. Dilated cardiomyopathy in primary is mostly idiopathic. We do not know the cause of dilated cardiomyopathy or it can be genetic, familial. It will run in the family. The patient will also have a history of other family members who had the signs and symptoms of heart failure in 50s. In early stages, patients develop signs and symptoms of heart failure. These patients should be screened for familiar mutations, familiar genetic factors that could cause dilated cardiomyopathy. Mutations in TTN, this is a sarcomeric protein that is present in the heart tissue that sarcomeric protein titan gene is damaged therefore that that causes dilation of the left ventricle mutation in the ttn gene is a commonly tested point in the exam so you must remember this in the secondary causes, alcohol use disorder, alcohol is cardiotoxic and it can cause the heart to dilate. Cocaine use can cause cardiac dilation. Hyperthyroidism, where there is excess tachycardia, can result the heart to fail and develop dilated cardiomyopathy. Drugs like doxorubicin, donorubicin are directly cardiotoxic and cause irreversible dilated cardiomyopathy. While on the other hand, trastuzumab, which is used in the treatment of breast cancer, causes the reversible dilated cardiomyopathy. In infections, Coxsackie B virus is a important virus that is commonly tested. Chagas disease is a very commonly tested point in exams that causes dilated cardiomyopathy. Peripartum cardiomyopathy. In the peripartum cardiomyopathy, there you will see pregnant ladies in the last trimester develop signs and symptoms of overt heart failure. Or even after delivery, within the next six months after delivery, these patients develop signs and symptoms of overt heart failure. And when you perform echocardiography, you would find a dilated heart. All of a sudden, with no history, with no cardiac history, with no coronary artery disease, with no history of hypertension, these patients develop peripartum cardiomyopathy or dilated cardiomyopathy. So, peripartum cardiomyopathy is a secondary cause of dilated cardiomyopathy. In primary, it's mostly idiopathic or it's genetic. A simple mnemonic that you can use to remember dilated cardiomyopathy is A, B, C, 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 D. A for alcohol, B for beriberi thiamine deficiency due to alcohol intake, C for cocaine, C for chagas, C for Coxsackie B virus, D for drugs like doxorubicin, donorubicin, trastuzumab. So these are the important causes that are commonly tested in exams. 
if the patient has a valvular heart disease or if the patient is having hypertension the patient has a cardiac heart disease that makes sense the patient can develop a dilated heart but that does not count as a dilated cardiomyopathy it is not called as dilated cardiomyopathy because due to the high filling pressures these patients are developing dilated heart dilated cardiomyopathy is the one that develops without a history of a cardiac disease basically these drugs or toxins or if the genetic factors play a role they cause a decrease in the contractility of the heart when the contractility of the heart decreases blood starts to accumulate in it because the heart cannot pump the blood out therefore the blood starts to accumulate when the blood starts to accumulate to accommodate that extra blood the heart starts to dilate the end diastolic volume increases and to accommodate that extra volume of blood uh, during each uh, cycle it starts to increase in size it starts to dilate and eccentric hypertrophy takes place now to understand cardiomyopathies you need to understand the concept of eccentric and concentric hypertrophy what happens in eccentric hypertrophy is that the heart sarcomere which is the basic building unit of the heart myocardium it is the basic contractile unit of the heart tissue this heart sarcomere in dilated cardiomyopathy starts to replicate and it starts to in add up in series when it adds up in series then it results in increased length of the myocardial tissue it does not increase the thickness it only increases the length so the myocardial tissue will be thin but the length will be bigger when the length of the myocardial tissue is bigger it will results in a big cavity it will result in ballooning of the left ventricle therefore you can see this is a normal size of the left ventricle if eccentric hypertrophy takes place where these are added sarcomeres are added in series it will result in ballooning up of the left ventricle that is dilated cardiomyopathy when it balloons up now it cannot contract properly now it cannot pump the blood out therefore patients develop heart failure this is eccentric hypertrophy now what is concentric hypertrophy in concentric hypertrophy these heart sarcomeres these sarcomeres are added in parallel when these are added in parallel they would increase the width of the tissue they won't increase the length of heart tissue they will increase the width when they increase the width then the size of the wall the thickness of the wall would increase and this would re result in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy what is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy i have explained it in detail in my video on hypertrophic cardiomyopathy you can check out that video in the link given in the description below now as we know that in dilated cardiomyopathy eccentric hypertrophy takes place and that eccentric hypertrophy heart cannot contract resulting in heart failure now coming to the clinical presentation the clinical presentation of dilated cardiomyopathy is just like heart failure patients the patients will be having shortness of breath there will be orthopnea when they lie down their shortness of breath would increase so most of the time you would see them putting pillows at their back or they would be sitting up most of the time they will be experiencing chest pain when they walk they will be having bilateral pitting edema they might even develop ascites they might have a hepatomegaly and large liver due to back up of the blood i have a detailed video on heart failure as well you can check that in my cardiology series now an important point to remember is that if dilated cardiomyopathy occurs and the left ventricle or right ventricle dilates it would stretch the valves if the left ventricle dilate it would stretch the mitral valve and when the mitral valve stretches then it would result in regurg it would result in improper closure the left uh, the mitral valve would not close properly and there would be an open space which would result in mitral regurgitation the same way tricuspid regurgitation can occur when there is right ventricular wall dilation the diagnosis of dilated cardiomyopathy like all other cardiomyopathies is done on echocardiography on echocardiography when you see you see an upside down heart and this is the uh, right atrium this is the left atrium this is the right ventricle and look at the left ventricle the dilated left ventricle this cannot pump the blood out this is a enlarged picture showing dilated left ventricle and compare it with the right ventricle this is dilated cardiomyopathy that you see on echo
If dilated cardiomyopathy affects two or more family members, then you must do genetic screening because in their family there is a disease, the disease of dilated cardiomyopathy and you must do genetic testing for TTN to look for the abnormality because the, if the patient, other family members are asymptomatic, there is a risk that those patients will develop dilated cardiomyopathy and you offer screening to first degree relatives via ECO. You can also do ECG and physical exam but ECO is the mainstay for screening in the first degree relative if in exams they ask you about screening of the first degree relative of dilated cardiomyopathy choose eco as the option on chest x-ray you would see a dilated heart now these patients of dilated cardiomyopathy will have excess tissue in the heart the excess myocardium and that excess myocardium will disturb the normal flow of currents when the normal current flow is disturbed that would result in av block atrial fibrillation reduced qrs voltages so these are the non-specific kind findings that you would see in these patients of dilated cardiomyopathy now coming to the management of dilated cardiomyopathy in the management of the dilated cardiomyopathy it's basically the management of uh, heart failure you tell the patient to stop taking alcohol because it is cardiotoxic and would damage the heart you tell them to stop taking any cardiotoxic drugs if the patient is on chemotherapy you give them the drugs that are non-cardiotoxic you tell them to start smoking cessation and you treat according to the cause if it is substance abuse if the patient is taking cocaine or amphetamine you tell them to stop it if the patient is having hyperthyroidism you treat the hyperthyroidism if the patient is on, having hiv you have to start antiretroviral if it is chagas disease then the treatment is nifertamox if they, they are chemotherapy you choose the less cardiotoxic drugs so it's basically the cause uh, dependent treatment if you, if you can find out the cause well and good if you are unable to find out the cause you have to manage in the patient as heart failure you manage the heart failure if the patient is having arrhythmias you manage that if the patient is having mitral rigors you go for valve replacement therapy now since these patients have dilated heart there is a chances of increased turbulence of blood to develop in the heart and that turbulence will result in the formation of clots when these clots are formed the clots can cause strokes so uh, uh, to prevent the thrombolic events you anticoagulate these patients you put these patients on anticoagulants like warfarin or heparin now since these patients have heart failure you put them on medical therapy and that if medical therapy fails to control the symptoms and these patients are very prone to develop arrhythmias like AFib and other heart blocks as I said these patients have chances of developing arrhythmias and can develop cardiac arrest in such cases with medical therapy you give you do device implantation what you do is that you put automated internal cardioverter defibrillator that if in any case any arrhythmias develop this device will detect it and bombard it with electrical currents and stop stops the arrhythmia from developing if the patient is symptomatic and left ventricular ejection fraction is less than 35 percent then you can should consider putting automated internal cardio defibrillator i have a full video on heart failure treatment you can check out that video in my cardiology lecture series then if uh, you have started the patient on, on medical therapy and the patient is having device implantation but still the patient is having severe overt heart failure with the, with that the patient is also having arrhythmias in such cases these dilated cardiomyopathy patients are the best patients for heart transplant dilated cardiomyopathy is the leading indication of heart transplant now these are mostly the patients where you do not know the cause of dilated cardiomyopathy and these patients are managed conservatively with medical therapy and when the medical therapy fails you go for heart transplant Coming to the complications, in the complications, uh, these patients can develop arrhythmias, dilated cardiomyopathy can cause thromboembolism, heart failure, and sudden cardiac death due to arrhythmias. Now, before going into the summary, if you like my video, please click on the subscribe button and make sure to check out my video on hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And I have, exp I have a whole playlist on cardiology lectures, ECG lectures, neurology lectures, emergency medicine lectures. You can check those uh, videos out on my channel. And if you want to support this channel, you can support this channel on Buy Me A Coffee. We talked about what is dilated cardiomyopathy. We talked about the primary and secondary causes and a mnemonic to remember the causes. Valvular heart disease, hypertension uh, is not called as dilated cardiomyopathy. What is eccentric hypertrophy where the heart sarcomere are added in series. Concentric hypertrophy that occurs in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and uh, how it causes heart failure. The clinical presentation, how it causes mitral rigors and tricuspid rigors, how you diagnose it on echocardiography and that you have to do genetic testing and screening in the relatives via echo. Supporting investigations include chest x-ray, ECG and the management includes treating the cause, 
with that managed heart failure if the heart failure management fails then you have to consider heart transplant in these patients and the complications thank you very much for watching this video and if you like it please make sure to click the subscribe button thank you very much